Good morning, folks. On the right side, the big blue area is departing winter storm Saturn. You've been watching its effects. It came from the west, but as it goes, the ocean attacks from the east. The storm surges began two days ago in New Jersey, then moved north. Massachusetts is one of the hardest hit areas, and yesterday many of you saw that house collapsing into the sea. Top ground activity of the last 24 hours is about one week straight of uptick south of Africa. The Nevada Del Ruiz volcano is rumbling again and people are cautioned to avoid the area. Been a few weeks since the Arctic got involved in quakes and the area between Japan and Kamchatka is swarming. Not far to go for our top story. Get this, over half the children in Fukushima have evidence of thyroid issues. They are claiming it's not a big deal because it's not that much higher than the rest of Japan. Well, they're half right. It's just that this truly was, is, and for decades will be a global event. It isn't that Fukushima isn't so bad, it's that the whole country is. The most powerful storm on the planet right now is Cyclone Sandra, about to kick south and head for cooler waters where we can hope she weakens and then drops peacefully onto New Zealand. Heat records continue to fall in Australia. Got well-defined temperature gradient through Europe, this red high pressure area is occupied by Arctic air coming down the backside of this counterclockwise low, while the leading east edge of this low fights it with Mediterranean warmth. We will have thunderstorms isolated tonight before the back edge of that western low brings in the colder air herself. Now, clockwise, counterclockwise. For newcomers, this might be awkward weather discourse, but I'll use winter storm Triton to explain. Low pressure sucks in and spins counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. All these will be switched in the south, by the way. The red high pressure pushes out in a clockwise fashion, and when you picture each doing their motion, you realize that opposite pressure near each other reinforces their motion at the convergence, and looks something like this. The central low is highlighted on the wind map, but picture how the clockwise high pressure motion on both sides of this is actually driving it harder. No secret why parts of Canada right now feel like a Mexican winter, and vice versa down south of the border. Torcon not yet updated, so eastern US please check local severe forecasts. Solar wind was intensifying as of yesterday's news, and it peaked a few hours later. We did get the magnetic disturbance we lacked yesterday. Inductions peaked near that time and are waning now. The minuscule plasma penetration was enough to light up the auroras. Folks, it looks like today will finally be the day another coronal hole faces Earth. Even now, you can see how the umbra field has kept us from really getting a direct look at this opening in the solar atmosphere, which is much thinner than anticipated. Checking the sunspots, saving the best for last, we'll start in the south central, grew a bit last night, missing the complexity to the magnetism. North central has the magnetism, but the umbra are spread out too much right now for powerful interaction. And then there's the limb tough to call this as one or two separate groups, but either way, the danger is likely at the bottom of the big spot. That magnetic hitch could be its danger point. Moon conjoins half the solar system in the next 48 hours. Let's see that coronal hole. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.